racing on Hong Kong. It seems the whole world comes to Hong Kong every day. Hong Kong is a place where East meets West. We are at the heart of the Pearl River Delta, an important gateway to China trade. The financial gateway between China and the rest of the world. This is Asia's downtown. My recipe for China starts right here. There's opportunity in every window. We manage the world's global supply chains from here. Perfectly placed for today's global business. Asia's central business district. Here, everything is fully accountable. Film capital of Asia. Everyone is treated equally. Hong Kong people make beautiful music. Tradition and innovation so fashionable here. A diverse and vibrant business community. It's Asia's wine capital, where the stars are always out. This. Is where the real action is. When it comes to business, come to the light that is Hong Kong, city of opportunity, the center of Asia, at the center of the world. Buonissimo. So stylish. A hundred points. Asia superstar. <laughs> Wanna see? Here for now. Here for the future. Gentlemen, good morning. My name is Scarlett Fu. I'm the Chief Markets Correspondent for Bloomberg Television here in New York. Welcome to the Think Asia, Think Hong Kong Symposium organized by the Hong Kong Trade Development Council. We now like to invite Mr. Jack So, Chairman of the Hong Kong Trade Development Council, to give the opening remarks. Mr. So. Chief Executive, the Honorable Si Wai Leung, Under Secretary of Commerce, Mr. Francisco Sanchez, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. On behalf of the Hong Kong Trade Development Council, a warm welcome to you all to the Think Asia, Think Hong Kong Symposium. We are grateful for the support of many major U.S. organizations for this event. They include Chambers of Commerce, business associations, and notably the U.S. Department of Commerce. The Under Secretary of Commerce for International Trade, Mr. Francisco Sanchez, will address the symposium immediately after our chief executive. The world economic order has been transformed over the past 10 years. Led by China, the economies of Asia have assumed a more significant role in the global economic recovery. This continuing shift from west to east offers new business prospects and opportunities for companies from the United States. We believe these opportunities are best realized through Hong Kong, the hub and prime gateway to Asia. China has changed a lot in the past 30 years. What used to be one of the poor countries, it has become the world's second largest economy. What used to be just a base for manufacturing and a destination for foreign capital, China has become one of the biggest markets for goods and services as well as a source for outward investment. Think Asia, Think Hong Kong builds on the success of the Pacific Bridge Initiative, a campaign started in 2010 by the Trade Development Council and the U.S. Commercial Service 
created to help U.S. companies to boost their exports of goods and services to Asia. We hope that the Think Asia, Think Hong Kong promotion will give this effort an extra push. For the current promotion, 200 delegates from Hong Kong and the Chinese mainland representing different industries, technology, finance, and the professional services have come to New York and Los Angeles. I'm happy to see that more than 1,000 of you here, U.S. companies, are here today ready to explore business opportunities with delegates from our part of the world. More than 50 business leaders from Hong Kong, Chinese mainland, and the U.S. will speak in the business forums held here in New York and in Los Angeles, respectively, along with seminars focusing on opportunities in technology, trade, and Chinese outbound investment. A finance seminar will also take place in New York, while an entertainment session will be featured in Los Angeles. In addition, Hong Kong service providers from the legal, accountancy, information, technology, distribution, and consultancy professions will offer individual consultations to assist U.S. small and medium-sized enterprise to build the Asia connection. Whatever your product, service, or business idea, partnering with Hong Kong is the most effective approach. Together, we can find you a market in Asia. Last but not least, I would like to thank all of the delegates from Hong Kong and mainland China to come specially over for this promotion. I particularly want to thank those who will speak in the different sessions. I'm confident that your support will make this event a success. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you'll find the Think Asia, Think Hong Kong Symposium enjoyable and rewarding. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. So. It is now our great honor to invite the Honorable C.Y. Lung, Chief Executive of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region, People's Republic of China, to deliver his address. Mr. Lung. Jack, Mr. Sanchez, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It is a great pleasure for me to be here in New York. Thank you for your very warm welcome to this great city and for your interest in Hong Kong. It is very encouraging to see so many of you here for this Think Asia, Think Hong Kong symposium. Also, congratulations to the Hong Kong Trade Development Council, Hong Kong TDC, on staging this big event here in the Big Apple. Our message to the U.S. business community today is simple. The best route for your companies to reach the vibrant Chinese and Asian markets is not a straight line on the map, but the route through Hong Kong. When you think of this huge China market, or the potential of emerging economies across Asia, when you think of the opportunities for your companies to do business in our part of the world, then think of Hong Kong. Allow me to highlight some of the reasons why Hong Kong is a great connector linking the US and Asia. Some of these are unique to Hong Kong, while others will be very familiar to the business community here in New York. After all, Hong Kong and New York play similar roles in international business and finance. Both of our cities are major international business centers. Both serve huge hinterlands. Both are leading global financial centers, and both owe their prosperity and dynamism to enterprising, hardworking, and outward-looking populations. Anyone who has visited Hong Kong and New York will also know that neither city spends much time sleeping. Of course, I'm not the first person to draw parallels between our two cities. I'm sure I won't be the last, but I'm here at a time of extraordinary opportunities for all. Consider this. Hong Kong, a city of just 7 million people, 
is the tenth largest market for U.S. goods exports. The value of these U.S. goods exports have tripled over the past decade to 37.5 billion U.S. dollars last year. There are over 1,300 U.S. companies in Hong Kong, and about half of them are regional headquarters. These companies know that a presence in Hong Kong is a ticket to the Chinese and the Asian markets. They know that if their product or services sell well in Hong Kong, they will also sell well throughout China, a market with 1.3 billion potential customers. In other words, our city is a very effective showcase for American goods and services targeting customers in Asia, a Madison Avenue of the East. Last year, we welcomed more than 30 million visitors from the mainland of China alone. Many came in search of foreign brands or the latest high-tech or high-fashion trends from the U.S. and elsewhere. Also, if you look a little deeper into the Hong Kong shop window, you will find a comprehensive network of services to support business operations, including financial services, legal services, logistics and IT services, hospitality services, and so on. Since its earliest days as a trading port and throughout its extraordinary development, Hong Kong has always reached out to markets way beyond its boundary lines. Hong Kong has contributed to and benefited from the opening up and reform policies of the Central People's Government since 1978. During the extraordinary period, we have built up the right experience, the contacts, and the know-how in doing business in the mainland of China. Through our day-to-day -day business operations, we share this experience with our friends in New York and elsewhere. When you think of Hong Kong, think of us as a chief information officer or chief knowledge officer for the mainland of China. When companies in New York or London or Tokyo or Southeast Asia want to know more about China, they turn to Hong Kong for the best and most reliable information. And because Hong Kong is a globally connected city, you don't have to spend valuable time and money crossing the Pacific Ocean to get the best information or to make the right contacts. You can do all that right here in New York. The Hong Kong PDC has had an office here in New York for almost 50 years. We also have a Hong Kong Economic Trade Office in New York. And importantly, we have the support of various business associations on both sides of the Pacific that have a mission to promote business links. One such organization is the American Chamber of Commerce in Hong Kong. AmCham Hong Kong is one of the largest U.S. business chambers anywhere with around 2,000 members. It does a wonderful job in promoting the business-friendly environment in Hong Kong and in promoting U.S. business interests in the to the Chinese government. I would like to also share with you some words of wisdom from the U.S. Consul General to Hong Kong, Mr. Stephen Young, who is here today. Speaking at a Hong Kong MCHAM event last month, Mr. Young said, and I quote, just as no nation stands to gain as much from the continued growth and dynamism of Asia's economies as the United States, so too, is Hong Kong ideally situated to profit from China's meteoric rise, whether it is from the continued development of the offshore RMB market, from Hong Kong's role as a preeminent gateway to and from the mainland, or from the growth of China's middle class, and American companies like yours are well positioned to profit from Hong Kong's role, end quote. Allow me to expand on Hong Kong's role as a preeminent gateway to and from the mainland. Since becoming Hong Kong's chief executive last July, I made it a priority of my government to pull out all the stops in building closer business ties between Hong Kong and the mainland of China. We are working on multiple levels to enhance government to government, or G to G, people to people, P to P, and business to business, B to B links across the boundary. And this is the boundary between Hong Kong and the 
mainland of China. My government attaches great importance to our G2G work because in the mainland of China, only effective G2G dialogue can be to G, namely business to government become easier. In terms of B2B, business to business connections, we have a unique free trade pact called the Mainland and Hong Kong Closer Economic Partnership Arrangement, or CEPA, C-E-P-A. CEPA benefits both Hong Kong and the mainland by eliminating import tariffs and providing preferential access to markets in 48 services sectors. A key aspect of CEPA is that foreign firms incorporated in Hong Kong, including U.S. companies, can enjoy the full benefits of CEPA. Since CEPA was launched in 2003, about 6.4 billion U.S. dollars worth of goods have enjoyed zero tariff treatment under CEPA saving companies a total of over 550 million U.S. dollars in tariffs. My government is working with our counterparts in the mainland on ways to improve the implementation of SIPA to bring more advantages to our business community, and that includes businesses from the U.S. in Hong Kong. The advantages that we offer U.S. companies have attracted also Asian companies to Hong Kong. For over 100 years, Hong Kong is the entrepôt for the well-known South-North trade between China and the Southeast Asian economies, drawing on the strong presence of overseas Chinese businesses in countries such as Thailand, Indonesia, the Philippines, Malaysia, and Singapore. Ladies and gentlemen, I have mentioned some of the things that give Hong Kong its unique competitive edge as a springboard to the large and complex markets in the mainland of China and Asia. Hong Kong is different, but we also provide a very familiar platform for U.S. companies. Under the principle of one country, two systems, Hong Kong maintains its own common law system with an independent judiciary. We have our own low and simple tax systems separate to the system in the rest of China. In Hong Kong, profit tax is capped at 16.5% and salaries tax at 15%, 1.5%. There is no GST or VAT, no inheritance tax, and no capital gains tax. As an international financial center, we have our own currency. The Hong Kong dollar is freely convertible and has been linked to the U.S. dollar at a fixed rate since 1983. We maintain a robust regulatory regime on par with international standards. Our civil service is clean and efficient, and we have open borders, free flows of ideas, and a free media. These are some of the reasons that the Heritage Foundation in Washington, D.C. has ranked Hong Kong as the world's freest economy for each of the past 19 years. We have also been consistently ranked number one for economic freedom by the Fraser Institute of Canada. As a leading financial hub in the Asian time zone, Hong Kong is third behind London and New York in the latest Global Financial Centers Index. My final point today is Hong Kong's role as China's global financial center and what it means to the business community here in the U.S. The liberalization of the Chinese currency, the renminbi, is a key trend in the international business community, and one that is likely to become increasingly significant for all of us. Hong Kong has a crucial role to play as a launch pad for China's currency liberalization. In a short span of nine years, renminbi deposits in Hong Kong have grown from zero to over 800 billion renminbi. And there is a growing range of renminbi-denominated investment products and a large appetite from overseas companies to use Hong Kong as a renminbi capital raising center. In 2007, we issued the first renminbi bonds in Hong Kong 
So far, there have been about 265 renminbi bond issuances with cumulative outstanding deposits of over 270 billion renminbi. Major companies, including leading U.S. multinationals, have issued renminbi bonds in Hong Kong to finance their operations in China. Today, companies around the world, including here in the U.S., can settle their trade with partners in every province in China using renminbi. Since the pilot scheme was launched in 2009, banks in Hong Kong have handled about 5,750 billion renminbi worth of trade settlement. Ladies and gentlemen, I encourage you to take full advantage of Hong Kong's position as China's global financial center and an international business hub in Asia. We are at your service and we are always open for business. I have mentioned some of the things that make Hong Kong a super connector in linking U.S. firms to markets in the mainland of China and across Asia. I hope that you will further explore these and many other exciting developments during the Think Asia, Think Hong Kong Symposium. I look forward to seeing you, your companies, and your brands in Hong Kong very soon. Thank you very much, and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Long. We now have the honor of inviting Mr. Francisco Sanchez, the Under Secretary of Commerce for International Trade with the U.S. Department of Commerce, to address us. Mr. Sanchez, the floor is yours. Good morning, everyone. Chief Executive Leung, thank you for your excellent remarks. Uh, it is my great privilege uh, to welcome you here to the United States. I have to tell you and all of my friends that are here from Hong Kong, I love Hong Kong. <laughs> As Under Secretary of Commerce for Trade, I have the privilege of representing my government, representing American business all over the world. Uh, I have been to Hong Kong three times in the last 18 months. So I was thinking of talking to you after the conference and trying to establish residency, if that's all right with you. Um, it's also just a great honor to be with so many friends here, uh, Ronnie Chan of the Asia Society, among other things, uh, Fred Lam, uh, Jack So, uh, Greg So, my good friend and colleague, uh, Secretary of Commerce and Economic Development, uh, and I'm delighted to welcome all of our uh, friends uh, from Hong Kong. This event is a reflection of the importance of the bilateral relationship between the United States and China, with a focus on Hong Kong's contribution to that relationship. It is also a reflection of the future of global trade, as Asia continues to grow as a very powerful economic region. As the world's two largest economies, the United States and China must engage with each other. And Hong Kong is a very important partner, a partner in facilitating even stronger ties between the United States and the Asia-Pacific region as a whole. The name of this conference, Think Asia, Think Hong Kong, is very appropriate. When we think about doing business in Asia, we have to think about Hong Kong because Hong Kong is in many ways our gateway to the continent. This is why we partner with the HKTDC on the Pacific Bridge Initiative. This program provides information and expertise necessary to any business looking to expand exports and investments in Asia with the help of Hong Kong. Asia is crucial to the future of the global economy. And it will continue to play a very key role in supporting the global economic recovery. Now, as many of you know, President Obama launched an ambitious trade agenda for the U.S. in order to increase exports. His National Export Initiative, otherwise known as the NEI, was launched in 2010 with the goal of doubling U.S. exports and in so doing, 
supporting an additional 2 million American jobs by the end of 2014. I can tell you that Asia is an important reason that we have made a great amount of progress toward these goals. Exports to Asia have increased every single year since the inception of the NEI. China is our third largest export market. Last year, the United States exported a record amount of $110 billion of goods and services to China. And U.S. exports to Hong Kong were about $37 billion in 2012. And as a result of the HK, HKTDC, the Pacific Bridge Initiative, and all of you here today, I fully expect those numbers to go even higher. For the United States, the level of export success is supporting our economic recovery, and it's putting Americans back to work. For Hong Kong businesses, increased international trade with the United States uh, is, a is a direct result of economic expansion, rising incomes, and continued development throughout the region. So put simply, trade between the United States and our economic counterparts in Asia is good for business on both sides of the Pacific. Another important part of our relationship is foreign direct investment. The Asia-Pacific region is a source of great possibilities as we look to increase FDI here in the United States. And Hong Kong is key to realizing those possibilities, both as a leading commercial and financial center and as the gateway for China's overseas investment flows from Hong Kong. Hong Kong is currently the fourth largest source of FDI to the United States and from the Asia-Pacific region. It is also a very important launching pad for Chinese mainland companies looking to invest in a wider world. I'm told by our friends at the American Chamber in Hong Kong that 60% of China's investment in the United States passes through Hong Kong. And in 2006, FDI from China to the United States has grown at an average rate of 71% every single year, faster than any other country, and I still believe there is room for growth. That's why I want to tell you that the Department of Commerce is hosting an inaugural Select USA Investment Summit later this year. It will take place in Washington, D.C. on October 31st and November 1st. It's a two-day conference that will connect investors, both foreign and domestic, with U.S. economic development organizations from across the country to support business investment in the United States. Attendees will learn what the United States has to offer, why it's a great place to do business, and meet the people that can help them make those investments happen. Uh, I hope to see many of you there at this inaugural and important summit. Now, like all of you, I appreciate that Hong Kong is a vital symbol of prosperity in Asia. Working with Hong Kong, U.S. companies clearly enjoy, as the chief, chief executive pointed out, transparency, good governance, and the rule of law that shapes a healthy economic climate. Our businesses are absolutely thriving there, with more than 1,300 U.S. affiliated companies in Hong Kong. And these businesses are playing a role in helping shape a more competitive Hong Kong which means a more economically prosperous China and a more prosperous Asia Pacific. During President Obama's tenure, there has been an unprecedented high level engagement in the Asia Pacific region. Uh, I mentioned I've been to Hong Kong three times in the last 18 months. I've also been to the Asia Pacific region more than any other part of the world. I've also heard firsthand from businesses who have participated in trade missions in, Asia, in the Asia Pacific area on how valuable their experiences are. Partnerships in Hong Kong's Film Mart, uh, I, I mispronounced that, Film Mart, uh, the film industry, very well-known film industry trade show, uh, have had continued success in sharing their products in Southeast Asia. They see Hong Kong as the ideal gateway to that region. And now we've got to do this work at all levels. In addition to this high-level engagement, it's important that our people get to know each other. As President Xi said just a few months ago, China needs to learn about the world, and the world needs to learn about China. 
From my perspective, as the world learns more about China, they will continue to think about Hong Kong. Today's conference is a perfect opportunity for us to learn about each other. That's why I am so happy to be here. I'm eager to work with all of you in the days and months and years ahead because together we can deepen our engagement. And in doing so, through economic growth, we'll continue to transform lives, businesses, and our futures. I know that you all agree these are all goals that are worth striving for. So let's get to work. Once again, my thanks to my friends at the Trade Development Council for inviting me to be a part of this conference. Uh, I challenge all of you to use what you learned today to help strengthen your businesses and support greater economic integration between the United States, Hong Kong, China, and the Asia-Pacific region as a whole. I thank you very, very much.